Hello internet people, my name is Robert and in this video I'll give you my tips on how to structure your website's homepage and what content it should include and just in general take you through what design elements are a must have on your website's homepage. Tips with punch. So first of all think about your website like a physical store, right? So if you come to a physical store, you have the front window uh, and you see certain things. You see a brand, maybe a bit of what they sell. If it's a premium brand, they'll be a bit more minimalistic, but you, in the, you usually get a feeling of the place immediately just by how it looks like from outside, right? So think about your homepage as this uh, front window of physical store. In essence, you just need to see in a glance, what are you selling and where can I go to find something? Because you need to also think, okay, they come to your homepage what would be the next step for them to take? So let's say it's a physical store. If you come to a sports uh, store and you want to buy a tennis racket, if you come in, how do you get to those tennis rackets? It's really important to guide people to the right place. One tip I want to give you that is kind of counterproductive for this video, but check how important the homepage is for your website. Because for example, for me, I get only 5% of my traffic to homepage. And I bet for most websites, the homepage is somewhere between five to 15% of people. So it's not a big group of people. So once you set up your homepage and you're happy with it, you don't need to update it every week or a month. Focus where people are landing and spending their time on. I think one of the most important things to have on your homepage is a value proposition, especially if you're a small website. And value proposition in this case just means why should people care about you and why should they buy from you? So what are you about? And usually value proposition consists of three things. That's relevancy. So basically, uh, how are you solving my problem? Or maybe you're improving my life. The second is what value you bringing me, actual value in terms of benefits. And then the third one, and probably the most interesting one is differentiation. So why should I buy from you and not your competitor? So how are you different from them? This is opportunity for smaller websites to connect with the customer. And just keep in mind, if you check your competition and there are bigger players and they don't have value proposition on their website, it doesn't mean you shouldn't put it there. Maybe they're well known in the industry or maybe they're not thinking about this. This is your chance to be different. And what I see with a lot of e-commerce websites is that when I come to their website, there's just this big banner with promotion. And I mean, I don't care about that promotion if I don't know what you're selling and why should I care? There's so many stores I can buy from. Like, why should I buy from you and not Amazon? That is super reliable. And this is where you, you can differentiate yourself. Let's take a look at a few examples of uh, a great value proposition. This is ConvertKit's homepage and they are on an email marketing platform. The value proposition is immediately visible when you land here. It says the creator marketing platform for your book, podcast, or newsletter, whatever. It just rotates all the time. And it includes the differentiation as this is a tool for creators and quantified value in terms of the marketing platform. So if you're looking for a marketing platform, this is the value you're basically getting. It then continues with the subtext where they tackle the relevancy by saying that the tool helps you grow and monetize your audience with ease. This is a great example of well-crafted value proposition and I especially like that they are so focused on creators. Email marketing scene is super competitive but they are able to differentiate themselves by focusing on creators. Another example, Evernote's homepage. Their value proposition targets relevancy first so they say, tame your work, organize your life. That's basically how they solve my problem. And then they continue with quantified value in the subtext. What I'm missing here is the differentiation. I mean, how are they different from, the, from other note-taking software? What makes them so unique? The second tip is to think about if you have different segments, for example, if you're a clothing brand, usually these brands have something, one segment for men, another for women, and maybe the third one is for kids. So do you need to separate these different people? Maybe you have another business where it's a bit more not so clear cut, like, I don't know, it's an employment website where you have employers and employees and uh, they have different portals just because you need to split them. They have different needs. So think about if you need to do that already on the homepage. Let's take a look at a few examples how others have done this. This is Asus homepage, which is a fashion retailer. And you can see it first asks if you want to see women's or men's clothing. And I'm sure you've seen similar segmentations on other websites. 
if you have multiple customer segments and they have very different needs this is a neat trick to split them up and then personalize their experience going forward the third thing that your website should have is a call to action once you establish your value proposition very clearly as soon as you land on the page above the fold and also you maybe split the traffic then think about what's the next step you want people to take so in this case in the industry they call it call to action so cta and it's usually a button or something in a very visible place like i don't know a try for free or free trial also think about if the next step is realistic for the person. For example, if you're selling something for $100, most people will need a bit of time before they can just go and buy it, right? So maybe you need to show the pricing page first. So you could say in your call to action, something like see the pricing page or something like that. So make it also realistic and don't think that people just will directly jump into buying. They need to be convinced first. We already saw a more traditional CTA on ConvertKit's homepage, which is just a button to start your free trial. You can see it here. But you could also do like VWO, which is an A-B testing platform. They ask for your email to start the free trial. You can see it here. And then next is a good example for service providers. This is a homepage of my local solar panel installers. And their CTA basically uh, focuses on the getting the consultation visit or planning the consultation visit. So they're using their website for lead generation. Just in general for the CTA, just keep it clear what you want the visitors to do next on your website and it doesn't need to be harder than that. The fourth thing you should show on your homepage is a wide range of product types. So basically just show your product catalog. If you have a lot of products, then do show all kinds of product categories you have because it's very important for people to, when they come to your website, they get a, just a sort of in a glance what you're selling. For example, if you're selling um, solar panels, um, maybe you also have other products like uh, green roofs and turbines and things like that. Make sure you display them somewhere. You don't need to show them in big, but it would be nice to see that you have other services that you provide as well. This just gives a nice overview to the visitor and they can see, okay, these guys are not just solar panel installers. They do other stuff in terms of green energy and this kind of thing. As an example, we have the homepage of Green Match, which provides green energy solutions. But what's cool here, they found a really creative way of displaying what services they have. So here's a little house. If you click on any of these numbers, it expands it uh, or shows this bubble and you can read more about their services, specific services in the articles here. They also have their ser all their services here below, so you there's no way you can ma miss what they provide. It's not only solar panels, probably their main thing, but they also have batteries and all this kind of stuff. It's just a nice way of displaying your portfolio at the glance. The next element on your homepage that you should have is some sort of benefits and features uh, section where you talk about a bit more about uh, what the customer gets from your product and also what are the facts behind the product. So for example, uh, a classic example of benefits versus features is when iPod came out, the first one, uh, Apple didn't say, you know, this has one gigabyte of storage. They said 1000 songs on one device. So that's a benefit to you. And then the one gigabyte is a feature. So just think about what's relevant for your industry in services. It might be a bit different, but maybe in that case, uh, your personality com can come up as a benefit there. Next, we have ScaleNuts homepage. It's a tool that helps you with content creation and it's powered by AI. And what I like here is how they have clear explanations of their features. So you can see here, very clear with subheadings. And then if I scroll down here, you'll see that they also have the benefits. I actually like these even more because I feel like they are really addressing my pain points. Uh, I would actually put these even higher on the page because they're they just so relevant to my needs. The next element you want to have on your website is social proof. In this case, it's somebody else talking about you. So if you have an article somewhere on a bigger website, or maybe uh, you have great reviews on Google uh, reviews, then display those on your website. It just gives that element of trust because it's not you saying you're good. Others are saying you're good and that your service is legit. So I have an example of scale not here. And if I scroll to their social proof, you can see that I don't recognize any of these brands. So I cannot say if these are real or are they made up. So they don't really tell me anything except that there's a lot of them. 
So this is not the highest trust that you can give me. However, if you have something like animals have on their website where you, <laughs> you recognize these brands, they're big brands, it's, it's much more effective if you use this. I still think you should use your client's brand, uh, logos if possible, but try to make it then a bit more relevant because just showing the logos is a bit boring. If you can get testimonials, especially video testimonials, that would be really golden for your website. Just gives that extra uh, layer of trust. And for services and smaller businesses, usually you would display Google reviews or Yelp or something like that. You just, you can embed those reviews onto your website and it's super easy to get started with that. And after you've added the benefits and features and things like that, talk about your business, then you can repeat your call to action and make it slightly different from the initial call to action because now you can also think, okay, this person just went through the whole homepage. They kind of skimmed through what we offer. So let's make that, that call to action a bit more specific. Maybe like give us a call or schedule a, a you know, calendar meeting or things like that. Make it easy for them to contact you. And just to show you how ConvertKit has done this, at the bottom of their homepage, you can see here, they have the CTA section, which is a bit different from the one at the top. And this one, they focus on how easy it is to switch from competitors. They even have a free service that will migrate from your old platform to ConvertKit. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, creating a strong and unique value proposition is pretty hard. But check this video for great tips on how to get started and what to take into account when creating value proposition.